and welcome. Hello and welcome. <laughs> It's so funny. I always love it when I'm interviewing someone who's part of the entertainment industry. And yeah. um, I love it because like, I always find that people in the same industry understand each other. So welcome to Lunchtime Marketing. My name is Bjorn. I am a global connector and conversation starter. Today we have an amazing person on our show. His name is Sunil Osman and um, he has a great CV. He is a coach. He is an MC. He's a keynote speaker. He has been in the entertainment for many years. I know it doesn't show, but what's so exciting about him is not just is he a normal, humble person. I have the privilege of calling him my friend and uh, many a tequila story, but he has also released a really new book, uh, which I'm so excited to talk about today. Sunil, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the, for firstly, for the compliment to say that you can't see how old I am. I really, really like that. Uh, but we need to bear in mind, I started in the industry at a very young age, so, so that explains a lot. So it's great to be here. Right. And I thank you very much for inviting me. I, I just hold my book up again. It just, it's just so nice to see you hold my book up. It's like, oh, wow, look at that. That is me. There we go. <laughs> Fantastic. So now, before we get into the nitty gritties of, um, you know, one of the things I always say about, about being an author is, you know, people see the book and they go, oh, cool, you wrote a book. But what they don't see is the hours of research, the hours of sacrifice, the, guys, sorry, I can't make the bri, sorry, I can't go to the birthday. I really, you know, all of those things. But before we get into that, let's just talk about like your world in the entertainment industry. I mean, we're not even getting into what this 2020 has been like, because that's a separate, that, that could keep us here for hours. But just give it like the audience, just a bit of context about who Sunil is. And then, you know, yeah. we'll get into some more nitty gritties after that. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Cape Town boy, Boyki. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I stay in Johannesburg at the moment, but I grew up in Cape Town. I started doing theater and drama at a very young age, and I've always just been the guy that is more the emotional side and more serious side. Yes, I'm a bit crazy as well, as you know, uh, <laughs> but there's, there's, a, there's a balance between that. So I've been on, a, on quite a journey over the past, I'd say, 20, 25 years uh, from a very young age. Uh, some people would say that's because I'm a mature soul, and, and I believe that. I mean, I, somebody asked me, how old are you? And I said to them, Biologically 37, sometimes 12 or 16, but uh, on a soul <laughs> level, I'm about 6,000 years old. So from just a brief about my background, I'm my, I come, my, my dad is a Muslim man, my mother's a Hindu woman, I was once a reborn Christian, and now I'm a spiritual person. Um, right. So there's a lot of mix that happens there, and there's, I concentrate a lot in my life on, on emotional intelligence, always, always been called that guy. My friends always say, you just that guy. You're always just there for people. And you right. know, sometimes that is what my purpose is. And that's how your purpose gets defined from a very young age. Uh, from an entertainment point of view, I started acting when I was knee high to a grasshopper. Uh, I'm still not very much taller than a grasshopper. Uh, <laughs> but I did drama. I did theater, voiceovers from a very young age. I got trained internationally as an auctioneer. And I've been doing MCing for a good 17 years now, and that's across the world. So I've represented South Africa in over 29 different locations around the world, Dubai, Miami, Alaska, Iceland, the list just goes on. And also do corporate trainings and keynote speaking. Right. Oh, and then I wrote a book. And then I wrote a book as well. <laughs> and just, just like, just by the way. So now the thing that I think a lot of people often don't realize, and, and you know, we've had a few people on the show, I call it the 10 years overnight success. You know, yes. that whole context where people go, oh, but did you, you only started this recently. And I mean, I was looking at your, your CV online and I mean, you know, at sunilazman.com and you've done a lot of stuff. And I, 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 you know, I mean, I think I met you a couple of years back, if I'm not mistaken, and it was through events and, you know, social media, et cetera, et cetera. And I always say, I, a lot of my friends today I met through Twitter. So thank you, Twitter. If it wasn't for you, you know, we would not have been able to share a lot of memories. But so now the one thing that I want to ask is, I saw you did some TV as well. Talk, tell us a little bit more about that. Yes. 
So I, I used to do ad hoc TV presenting. So I'd get a call and somebody would say, we need a TV presenter. And then I'd go and do the presenting itself. Um, and then I did a live game show for two seasons. Should I mention right. the brand? For a specific brand. <laughs> <laughs> and I always just be pay yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> And that was just before I, I went to go work in national government because I'm actually a, a qualified policy writer and analyst by trade. Uh, so I've got two degrees there. Uh, my thesis I also wrote about women empowerment in government. But while I was doing that, I was still doing the radio, still doing the TV. And there was a TV show which they used to call On the Couch with Sunil. And I used, to interview, I used to interview talent for that as well. So I've done a lot of that. And it's also probably part of the reason I've started doing some of my speaking coaching as well. Um, uh, so I took 20 years of acting, emceeing, singing. I used to sing, don't ask questions. And <laughs> I've, 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 ext I've extracted little exercises from there and put it into an hour workshop where I help people to become more aware of their body from a breathing, articulation, muscle, muscle, right. muscle point of view. And yeah, so that's, that's part of the reason I do that. So, you know, I think the big question a lot of people, when they hear it, you know, I always, I, we've often seen it, people get into stuff, whether it's TV, acting, singing, dancing, whatever the case might be, and it's then snowballs like a train. But mm -hmm. how did you, let's go back kind of a few grasshopper heights, and um, where did you actually start? What was your first, was it a university was it at school was it at a friend's house and you like you know there was a baby shower and the entertainment was late and you stepped in because that's kind of your natural personality how did it actually start for you i get that question a lot and i sometimes want to start when i'm in my teen years but i think for this purpose we'll go right back to 1989 when right. i played an elf in a theater production Right. And maybe, maybe it was setting the precedence for how tall I'm going to be in my life. But I played, this, <laughs> I played this elf and we performed. And I remember singing the song called Zippity Doodah. And I've never forgotten that day. And then it just, it just rolled on to doing actual drama at school and then joining choirs. Then I, at one stage in high school, I was doing three productions, one at my own school, two at two other schools. One was a cabaret, one was a theatre production, one was a... It was a mix of a whole lot of different things. Voiceovers, I started in 1994. It was for a coup advert, and they've drummed it into my head so hard, I'll never forget it. Thank you, Mom, for doing the best that you can do for me. The delicious wholesome <laughs> bean salad, and the, you know, so I never forgot <laughs> exactly. that. And then I, I, and throughout this time, I still took leadership positions. I was the chairperson of a policing forum. I was the public relations officer. So there's been a balance between the politics side and then the acting side. And then when I went to university, I immediately went to UCT radio and that's when my radio career started. My radio career actually started while I was at school, but I actually got into it when I went to UCT. I did radio for 16 years after that, in between everything else, uh, commercial radio, retail radio, un even campus radio. I started training people, became a station manager. And even while I was doing that, are still doing the background artist work. So from the yes. acting point of view, a lot of it started from being a background artist, but I'm very theatrical. So very Oprah, hands all over the place. And okay. I decided to conform to society and take a job after my second degree. Okay. And when I did that, I was just never very happy. And then I got retrenched, got another job, got retrenched again, got another job, retrenched again. In the space of a year and a half, I got retrenched three times. And I sat down one day and I said to myself, why are you being retrenched? It's right. because I wasn't following my passion. Right. Call up an agent, got into the agency. The agency said our books are full, call somebody else. They basically brushed me off, went right. to this other person. Within a week, got my first casting, landed the job and never looked back. Crazy. I see, you know, what, I, what I'm loving that you're sharing so authentically is a, a lot of people often, and we'll get into the, into the book now, is the whole context of they see the book and they go, oh, cool, you wrote the book. But they don't realize what you've just shared now is, you know, the, uh, a friend of mine always says the hustle is real. 
And that's the reality of what I'm hearing is you weren't just doing one thing. You were doing various things consistently because really that's what it is about building a brand. You know, we've had a few people on here that are, have been in TV and acting and radio and all that kind of thing. And the things that they often say is, you know, when you are in the entertainment industry, you, there's an element of this season for things. So there's a movie season, yeah. there's advertising season, then there's theater season, and then there's dance season, and then there's singing season, and 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 and. And I love the fact that you've just gone, right, I gotta pay the bills, because you know, that's the reality of life. We, li we live in a, a monetary exchange society. And at the same time, you were still pursuing your passions. And I'm, yes. I'm assuming, yes. Sunil, that you obviously must be having a bad day at some point. So yes. tell us, what do you do when you're having a bad day? How do you get from that point of, man, I feel, Ugh, and I just want to put my head on a pillow, cry. How do you get to that point? Or what is your motivation that you go, okay, now enough. I've had my mope. And I, I believe it's important. Take your, mo take your moment, but don't camp here. Yes. Don't set up a new home and go, look, I've just moved in. How do you get, how, what inspires you? Share with us. Okay. So, so one of the things you've mentioned there is quite, quite nice because I, 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 I do a keynote call running yourself as a business in the entertainment industry. And you, 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 you find your niche and sometimes your niche changes, which is what happened to me as well. Things progress, things change. I can go into a film set and a, and a director can come to me and say, what do you think of this action? It doesn't make me a director. It still makes me the actor. Uh, right. And that will evolve and change. And it's something I speak about when I do my keynote about running yourself as a business. But one thing I find, which, which, which it was a, it was a, an aha moment. I would go to a casting, for example, and wouldn't land the job, but never get feedback about it and do that, that pillow moping. Oh, why didn't I do this? What is it? My nose? Is it my eyebrow? I used to have one eyebrow. Is it my eyebrow? Is it right? You just got to keep going. You got to keep knocking. I mean, let's not even, we, we mentioned it in the beginning about 2020 and lockdown. People say to me, Sunil, as, in the industry, what did you do? You weren't getting work. Well, how did you survive? There was no survival. Rent was not being paid all the time. Bookings were not being made. But I had my book re-edited. I started doing motivational TikTok videos. I started, I shot an online movie. There is always something to do. So waking up, and I actually made a video about this yesterday, waking up in itself is a gift. It's a gift of life. Because literally, people don't, it doesn't sink into their heads that there are, there are people that did not wake up this morning. Yeah. They had these massive dreams of being interviewed by, with, with Bjorn, but they didn't wake <laughs> up this morning. They didn't wake up this morning. It's about not forgetting that, that, that life is a gift. You could have the almost swore now. You could have the worst day of your life. But, and somebody said this to me one day, it's a bad day, not a bad life. And when I, when I speak about that, then people often come in, especially when I do motivational speaking, then people will come to me and they'll say to me, yeah, but what about death? How do you deal about, what do you, what? You, you can't look at everything positively. And like you said earlier, you need to acknowledge the negativity. And I always say, acknowledge and deal with the negativity in a positive way. So even when somebody dies, what is, what is the takeaway from that? Did they have a good life? Is the family coming together? What have you learned from it? They are always something to learn. And no matter how bad finances are or your heart is or your life is, there is always something to take away from it. But must always acknowledge the negative side because if you're positive, positive, positive all the time, and something negative happens, how ready are you to deal with that negativity? Agreed. So, so now, would you mind sharing just something that was very, that you went through that was tough and just kind of share how you got over that? Just be talking yeah. about keep going and, you know, just a practical example. Yes. So, and this is very personal, but I'm going to do it in any case. Um, I, was, I was actually engaged seven years ago. Okay. And there were a lot of lies and a lot of love at the same time. And it was very hard for me to get over that. I think it's the toughest relationship I had to get, get through. Right. And the way I got through it was actually sitting down, reflecting what I've learned. 
from that experience. And, and my book speaks about this, about how you can actually apply that to your life, to love and to business. Bad things happen, but you sit down, you reflect, you acknowledge, you deal with it, you move on, you learn the lesson. And if you don't learn the lessons, you're going to repeat it over and over and over again. So Say that again. That, that is such a true story. <laughs> I preach that all the time. Yeah. Wow. So, so from a love point of view, that that would be the worst thing I went through there because obviously there was a life plan that was going to happen. From a business point of view, definitely the retrenchments. The, the retrenchments put me down and out. I'm talking about where I used to make two-minute noodles and keep the sauce so I can dip my toast that has been toasted after scraping the mold off to survive. Calling on people. What did I learn from that? I learned that the people that you think are going to be there for you are not always going to be there for you. The ones you least expect to be there for you are the ones that will help out, that will help you survive. So they taught me survival techniques. There are people these days who have tons and tons of money. When that money is taken away, they don't know what to do because they're living a material life only. I can go tell them how to survive. I've learned te techniques and, and skills. Whether it's eating a piece of chicken with seven pieces of bread and making it last two days, whether it is surviving on that sauce for the noodles, I, I've learned survival techniques. So that's, yeah. from a, you know, that's from a business perspective. From a life perspective, I've seen, I saw my grandmother pass away. Um, and that was very tough. I still haven't cried for it today because there was so much takeaway from it that I feel nothing but unconditional love. And wow. it teaches you a lot from a life perspective. So again, there, life, love, and business. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So now, so when you are having a bad day, like, and we're going to get into the book now, do you have some go-to material that you look at? That, uh, or videos that you watch or, or authors that inspire you that make you go, okay, got it. Picking myself up, bringing myself towards myself and kind of, you know, is it, it, do you have any, any people that inspire you or videos or whatever that might, or TikTok for all that matter? Yeah. <laughs> you know? so, so, yeah. So, so, when, so when I have a bad day, I always just take my mind back to a night when I had tequila with you. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Fair enough. So I find, I mean, I am, I'm a, a master Reiki practitioner. Right. And I find that meditation helps a lot. But when it comes to looking at other people, because, you know, even a motivator needs motivation. Absolutely. Um, I, I look at people like Deepak Chopra, Sadhguru. Uh, it's quite funny because people say I'm the South African Deepak Chopra. I'm like, oh, good, just hold the phone. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. <laughs> Uh, Let's just take 20 paces back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But also what really helps, what really helps is to just sometimes be still, be present in the moment and acknowledge the smallest gifts, whether it's the toothbrush that you brush your teeth with. Again, coming back to waking up, acknowledgement of what you have and paying gratitude for it actually provides a lot of positive energy. Right. If you don't... Yeah, you don't, I don't have that Ferrari F50, but I've got a car that, I, that, I, that has fuel inside. It drives me around. I, I've got a roof over my head, for example. You know, you, you, you acknowledge the small things. And I find that even in those days, those moments where I have those down moments, because don't, don't get me wrong, I do have down moments. I just pause for a moment and go, what am I grateful for right now? The fact that I'm awake, the fact that, that I have got at least bread, which I didn't have. So you acknowledge what you didn't have and what you do have now, the lessons that I've learned, the progress that I've made. Um, if you speak about, if you speak about TikTok, what I do with TikTok is I do my own content, but I also do lip syncing, but I add my own captions as a sunny motive because people don't interpret it as it should be sometimes. Um, but we'll get to that in a moment. Fantastic. So now, so, Let's get into that. You know, I'm, I, I love how just how authentic your cover is. Um, you talk about using his acquired knowledge and his ongoing experience. He does motivational speaking about the entertainment industry to inspire and grow those who is as passionate as he is. So let's start right there. You know, Sunny Motive is about thoughts and um, that's for your soul. 
Yes. I noticed also that it says volume one. So my curiosity goes, oh, <laughs> but we'll get there later. So tell us about what made you finally sit down. And I mean, there's so much inspiration in here. I love this. Life is hiccups. Take a breath and get through it. I was like, it's true. You know, because what I'm realizing that you're talking about is, is, Yes, we have bumps in the road. Yes, we get tired. Yes, we get demotivated. Yes, 2020 threw a lot of people, their goals, their vision. Some had to reevaluate. Some, some don't have businesses anymore. Some have had to reinvent their businesses. But the most important part I want to ask is, what made you go, okay, let's start and write this book? Did it yes. start as a, as a gr grateful journal that you eventually just went, oh my gosh, I've got a book? Or did it start with an intention of, I want to leave something behind that is going to be a legacy? Give us your thoughts. All right. So what many people don't know, what some people don't know rather, is that the Sunny Motive journey actually started around 2008. So it's been quite a, ten, a long... A 10 years of success. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so you've got to be like 75 for volume two, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> I have time. I have time. I have time. <laughs> so what happened is I wrote a piece called The Sun Will Rise. And I didn't realize how much impact that piece would have on people. And I didn't think much about it. I didn't think about my purpose in life, helping people grow or being there for people as the motivator and so forth. And as much as the book at the back says it's for the entertainment industry, what I found is that people beyond the entertainment industry are benefiting from the book. Um, we've had our first big bulk order, but I'll tell you about that later. And um, I started sending out tweets and messages, which I would come out through meditation, or if I meet somebody, I get inspired, or if I actually just read a quote and I'm like, what's this quote really saying? And then I'll come up with a different angle from the quote. And I started calling them sunny motives. Now, the E's dropped because I just said, no E, motive, let's be original, Sunny Motive. Um, Sunny itself is a nickname that came from many, many years ago, but the book explains that. And yeah. I started sharing this, and more and more people started approaching me saying, thank you for sharing this. This really changed my day. And wow. I realized that this was just the quote that I'm sending out. Right. So four years ago, a lady approached me, a young lady, and she, she was going through a tough time and she said her day really changed after reading A Sunny Motive. Why don't I write a book? And I was like, ah, oh, me write a book? Hell no. What people don't know is that I actually started writing another book in 2004 and I put that book aside because I was not connecting with it. Right. Sunny Motive is something that I really, really connected with. Right. But what I found was that people you or anybody else will read a quote, but that's it. They'll read the quote. They don't know how to apply it to their life. And for me, a quote is like a work of art. Depending on what you're going through in your life, where you are in your life is how you're going to apply it. I so I started sitting down and writing the quotes that I chose and explaining them, like how to apply it to your life, how you can take those bold steps. Then I realized it was all me, 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 me. And I had to rewrite that because I'm speaking from a life lessons point of view. Hence, the quotes cover life, love, and business. What, yeah. If you read the book properly, you'll see that you, you can actually marry all three of those. And that's when I realized that people either live for life, they live for business, or they live for love only. But there is a way to combine all three. And that is what my, my workshops and my book actually cover. So it's about helping people grow, pursuing my purpose. I've always just been that guy. So now let me be that guy in a book. And I had one of my readers contact me the other day because she said one of, a, one of the quotes broke her because she didn't wow. realize the lesson she had to learn. That's incredible. So making an impact, helping people grow, pursuing my purpose at the same time without denying it. Wow. It feels, you know, I, I've interviewed a few authors and, and what I'm hearing is, is that you seem to have learned a few lessons along the way. Um, 
would you mind sharing some of those? Because, you know, yeah. as much as you are leaving a legacy by inspiring other people, it sounds like you've learned a few lessons along the way that have left you touched, moved, and inspired, as I yeah. like to call it. Well, you know, something I don't hear many authors speak about. Everybody's on a journey. Right. But when you start writing a book and you truly connect with it, you change. Wow. You learn, you learn things about yourself. And what I've learned first and foremost is that my purpose, and in many ways, my book is soul work. Because I would like to help people evolve their soul, to learn about themselves, take bold steps. And what I learned, number one, is that I've got terrible grammar. I had to get editors. Uh, uh, F7, Sunil, F7. It's a brilliant button. <laughs> And then I, I, I also learned that people have so many life lessons that they don't share because they don't, and it's not applying to everybody, right. that they don't want others to grow from it all the time. Or they have an attitude that they know everything. We actually, we don't know everything, but we can learn from each other. It's about yeah. growing. And I truly hope that my book helps people grow and pursue their purposes and take bold steps. You'll notice the book is not a book you read page one to 10. You open it, you go, let me see how this is going to resonate with yeah, me. And, and lots of those life lessons that I've written have been what I've been through or what somebody else has been through that I've put into a sunny motive. So what I've learned about myself is that you can grow at any point in your life. I used to sit at a little pizza joint at 10 o'clock in the morning, three times a week. And they used to bring me a, um, a drink. And I used to sit there. A glass of water. <laughs> yeah, a glass of water, sparkling water. And I used to sit there for three hours on one quote going, how can I get this message across? What is the purpose of this quote? Like the hiccups one you mentioned. It's a basic quote. But it's, as you said, it's true. Yeah. And when my, when, we, when my publisher, I mean, I love her too, but she's fantastic. Her name is Lauren Moy, female-owned business. I support her big time. I've always been the, the male feminist in a way because I, I support women business. But when yeah. she read the book, she, she said to me, what are you trying to do here? Blah. And she, she, I think if she could shout at me, she would. But <laughs> way like... she, the, way, yeah, the way she put the book together just flowed so amazingly. And it was such an achievement to have the book published by her because she's a woman, but it was more of an achievement when I got the book going, this is almost my life work to this point. And I say to this point because I'm still going to continue growing. And just to finish this point off, what I've definitely, definitely learned, and I'm going to say it again, is that we do not share our life lessons and speak from a point of truth enough because we live up here a lot. Got it. And so, so you know, obviously for people that are going to be listening to this, um, I mean, you've pointed to your head that people are living in their head, but do you think as well that people are scared to share their story because they have a, I call it a self-acclaimed fear. The fear of the potential perception they've created in the world and then people actually hearing the truth. So that they, yes. uh, that fear of, oh, you're not who you've made yourself to be. Or do you think it's a context of shame, of guilt, of they're trying to forget things in their past with the intention of, if I just keep moving forward and not sharing the past, then it's not part of me. Do you think that comes into play at all? I'm going to start the answer for this by simply going, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, Right. Still have it somewhere. Um, <laughs> I, left the, I left the country a good five or six years ago because my ego sat here. My ego was up here. The ego right. involved me not healing past trauma issues, just right. denying it, just moving on, thinking that's going to help. What right. actually happens, and I'm glad it happened to me at, at the age did, because what happens is when people get older, this, this trauma comes back to them. So they don't okay. deal with the trauma. So lots of people want to avoid it. <clears throat> and that's fine because everybody's on their own journey. I'm going to say it again. Everybody's on their own journey. 
And it's extremely frustrating because you just want to grab and then go, wake up, heal this trauma. Move on. <laughs> yeah. But not everybody can do that immediately and that's fine. So yes, there, there is this, this, this artificial world out there which people are living, which is sad. And, I've, and, I, and I can tell you right now, I can be very fake if I want to be because I know how to do it, but I'm aware of it. So what my you have to manage does, it. Yeah, it helps people become aware of what they're doing. I'm posting videos. I'm, I'm not doing it for instant gratification anymore. I'm doing it for a purpose. Yes, there's going to be the instant gratification, but I'm aware of it. So when people have to step into their truth and find out who they are, this is what happens. It becomes scary. Right. Because, oh my gosh, who is this person that I thought I knew for the past 40, 50 years Suddenly, I'm not this person I've been pretending to be all along. And we all pretend. Hey, I pretend sometimes. I'm going to admit it. But I'm aware of the pretense now. People that are not aware of the pretense. Uh, so it doesn't fuse as, as who you are. You're able to distinguish that you and this is you, the actor. If I can call that's it that. It. That's it, yeah. So, I mean, maybe a message would be, there's nothing wrong with healing. Right. But don't backstep because the healing gets nullified. Love right. yourself and speak from a point of truth. When I speak about point of truth, I'm talking about speaking from here, from your heart. The head, the brain is so powerful. So powerful. Amazing. So now tell us if people want you to get hold of a copy of this book, what would be the easiest way for them to, to get a copy? All right. So the, the easiest way right now would be to go to take a lot. Dot com. Yeah. Uh, I, I have been informed that the stock is running out there. So okay. we're going to have to do another run, hopefully. Um, we've Which had, is great. Yeah, we've had, we've had one or two bulk orders coming through. Okay. And you can also email my publisher. It's uh, sales at laurenmoypublishing.com. Fantastic. And Moy is M double O I, yes? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. And if, you, if you're struggling, you can just contact me on all my socials and I'll send you the details. Okay. Fantastic. So now, if, the question I have in my head now, if volume one took you the 10 years overnight success, right? Are you going to wait another 10 years before we get volume two? Or is there something in the pipeline that we should not talk about, but we will because we can? All right, what we, what we can do is we can do this to the pipe, we can open it up. <laughs> and I can tell you that I am busy working on my second book at the moment. Right. Um, it's not going to be volume two. However, it's going to explain a lot about how and why volume one was created. Wow, so it's almost like in a theater production where you're taking us backstage and going, let's give you a bit of a big reveal. Okay. That's right. It's going to be and the when can we look cost. forward to that? So Neil, are we waiting another 10 years? Are we, are, we, are we cutting that down? Well, I spoke to my publisher just uh, three days ago, and we're looking at about a six-month to a year window. It's a long, okay. writing, pro it's a long writing process. Um, oh, fair enough. It's, it's going to be very intense, but it's not going to be the 12, 12 years that that <laughs> took. <laughs> the 10 years overnight success. Okay. And Sunil, tell us what's happening in your world. Is there some events coming up? Uh, is there anything like viewers would like to know that they could maybe attend? Tell us more. Well, at the moment, um, there are one or two workshops around my book that I'm trying to get off the ground. Uh, so okay. I call it workshops, but it's more a, a day program, a day session. Um, okay. But obviously with the COVID regulations, it's, it's very touch and go. So we're looking at 2021. I'm going to be presenting to a university psychology department. And I know I have to be very professional that day. And, <laughs> and I'm, doing, I'm doing the emceeing. Um, so if anybody wants me to emcee, what I find lately is that when I emcee, I sometimes slip into sunny motive. So let me give you motivational inspiration at your wedding or your birthday. <laughs> I love it. And then uh, I'm also busy... Uh, waiting for finality on a feature film. Oh, this is exciting. Wow. Yeah. We, we, we're not allowed to talk about it, but want to talk about it. So finger on the lip. 
<laughs> so if you like to put a finger on the lip and go feature film, but we don't say anything. Feature what? <laughs> Crazy. Sorry about that. I just had my phone yeah. ring. You've got to love it. So Neil, um, so if we're going to make it kind of sum, summarize today and, you know, just a bit of take out for, for the listeners, because, you know, we like to just kind of give people a summary. People are really busy. We'll always catch the summary at the end. What would you say are the top three things that you've maybe learned um, through this journey from the starting um, up until actually the day where you went, it's live, it's out, uh, that people can just take away and... and Lost there you there. Sorry about that. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. so can you let, me, let me say that again. No problem. So what would you say as a summary are the three things that you would take away um, that you could share with listeners um, of the three things that you learned from having started this book up until the, when you actually had it in your physical hand? Okay. Lesson number one. If you want to really know yourself, write. Great. Cool. Lesson number two, speak from a place of truth. So being really authentic, right? Authentic. Lesson number three, love unconditionally. Always. And be grateful. Incredible. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got a person who's constantly calling me for some reason. So sorry demand, about that. Demand, demand, so thank you for those <laughs> <laughs> What can I say? Thank you for those three lessons. So Neil, it's really been awesome just to learn about not only your book, but just to learn about you as a person and just all that you've done. Thank you for your time. Um, thank you for sharing your, your you know i've had the privilege and I, I do call you a friend i always say if you've been in my home then you are a friend otherwise you wouldn't be so um so that's really special and um for, for our listeners just to sum up so they know if they want to get a copy of the book and um, they can go into sunilosman.com otherwise they can email just repeat the email address again please so you can you can either get the book of takealot.com and then you can yeah. email sales at laurenmoypublishing.com. And that is Lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N-M-O-O-I, publishing.com. Fantastic. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, Sunil, thank you so much for sharing. Really excited. For our listeners next week, um, we've got another awesome speaker coming up. His name is Brent Lindeke, and um, he's known as the Good Things Guy. And so do tune in next week, Thursday, next week, Thursday. We had an Irish person on the show recently, so I've got into Irish mode. And we'll be just really sharing this month is all about brand building, how you build your brand. And one of the things that we've had today, the privilege of listening to Sunil Osman, who's written Sunny Motive, volume one with volume two in the pipeline. Sunil, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for just being here. It's always great just to have a wonderful conversation as always. Thank you. Please remember to always share your life lessons, love and light to everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Sunil. Have a great day. Take care. Cheers.